Rapid Dragon goes on the warpath. The ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia has clearly demonstrated that when adversaries of roughly equal strength meet on the battlefield, success is not determined by the presence of some ultra-modern, super-effective weapons. It's the quantity that decides everything. You fire 10,000 shells at the enemy in a day and he only fires 3,000? Then you have the advantage. And a dozen launches of HIMARS or Excalibur shells won't change anything dramatically. And since it's the number that decides, the weapons must be simple and cheap. The Russians realize that, and now they've already attached a device in the form of wings and a GPS sensor, costing a couple thousand dollars to their half and half ton bombs, which they have in their arsenal in the thousands and thousands. And now we see a precision weapon, which cost Putin a penny, and which he has a very, very much. Turns out that tanks play a huge role in the war. The Russians pull out of their huge arsenals the old T-55s, the same age as the American M47 Patton II tank, put on them the modern dynamic protection, new sights, and in front of us quite an effective self-propelled artillery gun, a hundred of which will always beat a dozen German Leopards too. What would you say if in such a way, which costs dozens, not millions of dollars, you can considerably increase the amount of strategic weaponry? Would you say that it's impossible? You'd be wrong. Watch this video to appreciate the ingenious simplicity of this solution. In November 2022, the annual NATO air-sea exercise, Atreus 22-4, off the coast of Norway, featured an interesting novelty. The Rapid Dragon palletized missile weapon system developed by the well-known American company Lockheed Martin. This weapon is a conventional transport pallet with four low-observable cruise missiles, AGM-158B, JASM-ER. The pallet was loaded into a conventional MC-130J Hercules military transport aircraft for the exercise. Let us stress once again, an ordinary aircraft. It had not been upgraded in any way. With the help of roller guides, the pallet Rapid Dragon was pushed to the opened in-flight cargo hatch of the plane, and then the parachute of the pallet pulled it overboard. The main parachute opened, and the pallet hung from the sling so that the missiles were in an upright position. Then they fell out of their cells one by one under the action of gravity. Then they unfolded their wings, started their engines, and rushed to their program targets at 575 miles an hour. Simple? Absolutely. But in doing so, an ordinary $40 million military transport aircraft was turned into a strategic missile carrying aircraft worth well over $100 million. The idea of launching cruise missiles from transport or even passenger planes is not new. In the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force was seriously considering the idea of a missile-carrying airplane based on the Boeing 747-200. Cruise Missile Carrier Aircraft, abbreviated CMCA, was to carry 50 to 100 AGM-86 ALCM air-launched cruise missiles on drum-mounted launchers inside the fuselage. Squadrons of such missile carriers were to continually patrol the air borders of the Soviet Union in readiness for a massive strike. The main argument in favor of the CMCA project was its price. A missile carrier based on the world's most famous airliner would have cost mere pennies to build and operate. The CMCA project was not implemented because Pentagon generals who received good encouragement from the military-industrial complex feared that if it succeeded, Congress would slaughter funding for the promising B-1B supersonic bomber, but the idea remained popular. In Iraq in 1991, the Americans used military transport planes as improvised bombers, dropping pallets of bombs. In Afghanistan, military transports were used to drop super-heavy GBU-43B Moab anti-bunker bombs. And finally, the Rapid Dragon. By the way, the project owes its name to a Chinese weapon thousands of years ago, a design that allowed you to shoot several crossbow bolts simultaneously. The design of the Rapid Dragon is literally ridiculously simple. It's a perfectly ordinary transport pallet for a forklift. It can even be made of wood. Rack and pinion rocket rails are mounted on it. Depending on the requirement, one pallet can hold from six or up to nine weapons. If less is dropped, ballast is placed in the empty cells. Up to two six-round pallets can be loaded into the hold of the C-130 Hercules, and the larger C-17 Globemaster can carry up to five nine-round pallets, which is 45 rucks. The pallets are loaded into the hold of the military transport aircraft as a normal load, 
In flight, they're discharged through an open tail hatch with a small extraction parachute. The extraction parachute pulls the pallet overboard along roller guides, after which the main parachute opens. The pallet stabilizes, hangs on the slings, and then begins to drop missiles one by one. The Rapid Dragon currently operates with the AGM-85 JASM ER cruise missiles. The acronym stands for Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile Extra Range. This subsonic stealth cruise missile was designed to give tactical aircraft, fighter bombers, and attack aircraft the ability to hit protected targets from a safe distance. The original version was equipped with a 1,000-pound high-explosive penetrating warhead and flew 230 miles. The ER version features larger fuel tanks, which increase the range to 575 miles at the same size. The missile is guided by a combination of an inertial guidance system and GPS guidance, as well as an infrared target identification system. During the exercise in Norway, missile targeting was done from the ground outside the aircraft's line of sight using a satellite link. This demonstrated the ability to target and redirect the missiles during the flight of the aircraft. As a promising payload for the Rapid Dragon, the U.S. Air Force is also considering the following options. The first option is a long-range, short-range AGM-158D JASM XR cruise missile. This missile is a further development of JASM ER with a new wing design. The range will be about 1,200 miles. Small-scale production began in late 2021, and full-scale production at a rate of up to five missiles per month is expected by 2024. The second variant is the AGM-158C LRASM anti-ship short-range cruise missile. It's a variation of the JASM family specifically designed to find and engage ships in the open sea. LRASM has a range of up to 350 miles, uses only passive sensors, infrared matrix camera and radar detector to find the target and can coordinate with other missiles in a salvo. The third option is the JDAM-ER guided gliding air bombs. Representing a hinged set of folding wings, rudder planes, and autopilot with GPS, JDAM ER kits are put on conventional unguided aerial bombs, giving the ability to accurately engage targets up to 80 kilometers, depending on the drop altitude. The integration of JDAM ERs on the Rapid Dragon is of particular interest because such munitions are extremely cheap and provide the ability to precision carpet bomb dispersed targets, such as concentrations of troops from a safe distance. That is what the Russians are doing now, but they only use one bomb at a time. And in the case of the Rapid Dragon, a whole swarm of bombs would fall on the enemy. The fourth option is the Quick Strike ER guided mine planes. These mines are JDAM ER type bombs, i.e. conventional high explosive bombs equipped with planning and guidance kits, and additionally equipped with a Quick Strike digital non-contact detonator that allows them to be used as sea bottom mines. Launched from an airplane, these gliding mines can reach the minefield deployment area by themselves and land in designated positions. This allows them to mine enemy waters from beyond the range of air defense. Finally, a fifth option is the ADM-160 MALD autonomous decoys. These small-sized imitation drones are designed to mislead enemy air defenses and are capable of accurately reproducing the radar signatures of various aircraft from the F-35 stealth fighter to the B-52 strategic bomber. The latest models, the MALDJ, also have electronic jamming systems that can be used to jam radar from a safe distance. To summarize, so what does the Rapid Dragon do for the U.S. Army? Now, every heavy military transport aircraft can be regarded as a strategic rocket bomber. The simplest implication is that the U.S. has just increased its fleet of bombers, missile carriers, Thanks to the Rapid Dragon from 116 units, this is the 58B-52H and 58B-1B to 786 units, including C-17 and C-130. And it'll cost, well, maybe a couple of million dollars rather than tens of billions? And that's not all. To use the B-52 bomber requires a concrete runway length of at least 3,000 meters. The C-130 heavy transport aircraft can take off from a 910-meter dirt track. Controlling exactly where and what forces the U.S. Air Force is deployed becomes virtually impossible. This system represents an opportunity for NATO or simply friendly countries that do not have their strategic aviation to acquire one. For example, JASM and JASM ER missiles are in service in Australia, Poland, and Finland. Australia has 30 C-17, C-27, and C-130 heavy transport aircraft capable of carrying the Rapid Dragon. Poland has five Hercules. 
By outfitting their Hercules with rapid Dragon trays, these countries gain the ability to launch massive strikes with low visibility cruise missiles over 2,500 miles away. This radically strengthens their capabilities, changing the regional balance of power. At the same time, this reinforcement requires virtually no de facto additional spending. Yes, the war in Ukraine caused truly tectonic processes in the world. The U.S. has drawn the necessary conclusions from it and may soon increase its power many times over. Well, let's see how Russia can respond as it sinks deeper and deeper into the quagmire of problems caused by its aggression. And what do you think about it? Write about it in the comments below. As always, please make sure to like and subscribe for more interesting reviews on modern weapons.